All right, I am Jessica Ernst. I'm a Canadian. It's my third trip over here. I am suing three parties in a big frack lawsuit because I live fracked. My aquifer was illegally fracked, and I have lived fracked now for uh, going on uh, 12 years. While I go through my story, I want you to think about how much abuse of power is covering up pollution by hydraulic fracturing. This image you see here, this is a frack field northwest of Fox Creek, Alberta, home of the world record 4.8 magnitude earthquake caused directly by hydraulic fracturing. And under that is our constitution that has been fractured. They cannot frack us with our rights intact. In the UK, the Magna Carta was fracked by the Infrastructure Act, taking your rights away. They're doing the same thing in Quebec. Everywhere that they're fracking, they are doing this. There's a lot more to my story than you will hear tonight. If you want to read more about it, you can read this book, Slickwater, by Andrew Nikoforik. He's won a number of awards with this book. We often hear about the best in the world regulations. Don't worry in Northern Ireland. It'll all be taken care of you, so go back to the pub. We'll take care of everything, and we'll make sure that the regulations are enforced. But this is not true. Everywhere that they're fracking, what they're really doing is deregulating while promising you best in the world regulations. We were promised best in the world, world class gold standard. So I've been thinking about this as I watch our regulator. Every time another person's water is contaminated in Canada, the regulators change the rules to protect the polluters. So I think the best in the world regulations is for the polluters. Rosebud is a tiny little community, theater arts community, northeast of Calgary. There's about 100 people live there. It's extraordinarily beautiful. I am suing our water regulator, Alberta Environment. Every time they kind of get caught breaking the law or doing something dirty, they, the government changes their name. This is so that the people forget when election time comes along. For the majority of my story, Alberta Environment is who I'll talk about. After my lawsuit went public, because I'm suing Alberta Environment and, and uh, NOAA Company, as well as the energy regulator, the government took all of the control of fresh water away from the water regulator and put it under the energy regulator, which is controlled by the oil and gas industry in Alberta. I'm also suing the Energy Resources Conservation Board, and they keep changing names. They were even caught lying and spying on innocent Albertans. The Alberta Research Council was involved in my case. They too changed names after I went public with some of their dirty doings. And in Canada, after my lawsuit was served on the parties, they changed company names by splitting out their oil riches into Synovus. Industry has known for decades that their energy well bores are leaking all over the world offshore and onshore. This is a report, a multi-year study, by the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, and they even admitted in their title that migration of methane from leaking energy wells is contaminating groundwater. The historic water well record on my water well says, gas present, no. 1986. At the time of the new experimental hydraulic fracturing starting in Alberta, most of the water wells historically, the record said gas present, no. Less than 0.2% had a gas present that could be methane. Try to remember this. Natural gas does occur in aquifers and water wells. It's usually at very low levels, does not dramatically change. Dr. Carlos Muhlenbox at the University of Alberta is considered the king of fingerprinting where these gases come from. And he says that microbial gas does not produce ethane. All of our contaminated water wells in Alberta have ethane. The CAP baseline study says most of the water wells they looked at had less than one milligram per liter methane in those wells. That's a good baseline. Risk of explosion occurs at one milligram per liter. Try to remember that too. The regulator did a study and they found most of the water wells they looked at did not have any methane or ethane in them and the two that did from the fingerprinting data, it looked like industry had contaminated them. Dr. Bernard Meyer is another researcher at the University of Calgary and he says free gas is not normally found in water wells. We all have free gas as well as dissolved gas in our contaminated water wells. 
I bought my property in 1998. This is the old Rosebud River that goes through my property. It's very beautiful and very wild where I live. Come on in, don't be shy. We looked at 2,300 historic records, water well records around my property at the time of the fracking starting, and we found the exact same percentage, or just a little bit less. Again, less than 0.2% of the water wells around my water well had a gas present that could have been methane. Our Canadian Council of Ministers of the Environment had a big important workshop. They didn't tell the public. They concluded that unconventional drilling poses a serious risk to quality and quantity of water in Canada. Unconventional drilling is what they is, is the oil and gas that they are hydraulically fracturing to force the hydrocarbons to let go. Conventional oil and gas does not need that because the hydrocarbons will freely flow to the well and up to the surface. We the, the report stated that we need baseline studies and we need to track the contaminants. But instead of doing that, in Canada, fractured our drinking water aquifers repeatedly in secret. I was working for the company at the time as a consultant, and I live down here in the Rosebud River Valley. Here's the grain elevators. The hamlets of about 100 people live there. They are on municipal water wells. I was consulting for this company, and I did not know. In the years of research that I've done since I've uncovered this, I believe the companies were planning to frack us all over the world without letting us know. And they used us as a bit of a guinea pig. Let's see how bad we can cause this contamination and see if anybody says anything. The people in Alberta have really sold their souls to this industry. My frack's life began with a lot of noise, and Canada continues to violate my legal right to quiet enjoyment of my property and home, even with my lawsuit that's now coming to the end of its 10th year. But I was very lucky. My, na my neighbor came to me. His water well had gone bad after Encana had fracked some wells near his place. He has a farm. And he warned me to get my water well tested, so I did. Lucky for me, or I would have no lawsuit. And Canada tested the metals. The tester did not report visible gas in my water. The water appearance was clear. These are the results here. It's my name and Canada's name. There's a few more pages of data to this. After I went public with Encana breaking the law and contaminating my community's drinking water supply, Encana has publicly stated and put on their website that I refuse to cooperate and will not let them test my water well. Their very own, their very own data here proves them a liar. I blew up the important part here. My water now pours white like milk. There's so much gas in it. This is the energy well bore data on the energy regulator's website that the companies must file. The new brute force hydraulic fracturing comes with a phenomenal cumulative impact to each well. 24 zones on the well that Encana illegally fractured into our drinking water aquifers were perforated with numerous shots with which to inject the, fr the frac fluids. The companies promise us that the casing protects our groundwater and protects the gas from migrating into basements and buildings and into, into uh, waterways. But they don't tell us that they're blasting holes in that casing. So it doesn't matter if they have five layers of casing or seven layers of casing. If they're blasting holes in it, they're compromising it. And then they fractured. This is the water, this is the data on the water database, the water regulators database that Encana filed. These are the depths, 121 meters to 219. These were intentionally perforated and then later fractured. These are our fresh water aquifers. The um, well is on top of the river valley top, and we call them coolies in Alberta. And our water wells are down in the bottom of the valley. So you think of the elevation change and where in Canada did these perfs and fracks was right where we get our water from. They did this on purpose. Water wells started to go bad. Here's the Encana gas well. These are two freshwater aquifers. My water well's over here. They didn't tell us. This is Mark Taylor. He was a manager at, this, uh, at the time for Encana. He's now on the executive of the energy regulator, fast moving his way up. He's just been promoted to vice president. He looked us in the eye at a community meeting, over 200 people there, very concerned about our water. 
and fracking, and he told us they would never frack anywhere near our drinking water aquifer. And not only that, they would only frack far below the cap rock, the impermeable layer that's going to prevent gas from migrating to the surface and into our water. But they already had. This was six months after the company had already fracked our aquifers and didn't tell us. And then they promised a tiny little bit of money to one part of the community, which effectively silenced the community. The Rosebud Municipal Water Supply blew up in a serious explosion, seriously injuring our water manager. He was hospitalized. He was nearly killed. What is the purpose of hydraulic fracturing unconventional formations? These formations do not naturally want to let the hydrocarbons go. They are tightly adsorbed to the coal, the sand, the shale. So they have to fracture with numerous crews and trucks to force the hydrocarbons to let go. And Canna forced the hydrocarbons to let go into our water supply. My water dramatically changed. The taps began whistling like a train coming. My dogs would pace all night. I didn't know why. I foolishly figured out how to stop the whistling so that we could sleep by putting a hairpin in the bathtub um, thing that you pull to have the shower go from the tub tap, the tub tap, yeah. But of course, that just had, the, you could feel the gas just blowing into my house. There was so much of it in my water. My skin began getting incredibly painful burns when I was bathing, but never do we think our water is burning our skin. So it never occurred to me that the water was burning my skin. And I was working as a consultant for Encana up north. Um, soaps and shampoos no longer made any suds. I had not changed them. I went to a doctor because the, um, the skin problems were so painful. And she thought that I had been using an industrial soap. She says, it looks like you've been burned by an industrial soap. And I said, well, I haven't changed any of my soaps. I'm using household soap. But companies do. We're going to start dancing now. The party's still happening. <laughs> Did do all of you know about the party at the Rainbow in, uh, yeah. in the South? Yeah, still, still happening. And there was so much gas in my water that when you'd flush the toilet, that it would wet the toilet seat. And if you filled the bathtub, it would wet the floor and wet the edge of the tub. And again, I couldn't figure out what was happening until one day I poured a fresh bowl of water for my dogs and they backed away from it in revulsion. There was a big cloud of white smoke coming off of it and it hit me. They have been lying. There's something wrong with the water. And I started to dig and dig and dig. It's not Photoshop. That's my water. I'm a blur. Even though I've done this many times for the press, that's me here. I uh, jumped away. It's sometimes it's really, it, it, it goes like a rocket. And instead of regulating the law violator, I presented all kinds of documented evidence of Encana breaking the law to the energy regulator. At this time, I thought we had energy regulation. I really did. I was conned. They conned me. And I worked in this industry at that time over 20 years. So they'd lie and they deregulate every piece of evidence I sent them of Encana breaking the law. They changed the rules to match the noncompliance. And I've seen them do that in many different jurisdictions. And then they tried to intimidate me into silence. They wrote me this letter. They're quite arrogant and very stupid at the regulator. They copied the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the surveillance branch, security. They violated my charter rights in this letter. And they signed it and actually mailed it to me. Most people with constitutional violations don't have evidence as good as this. They judge me a criminal. They punish me without any evidence, no hearing, no trial. And they banish me from energy regulation at a time when my water's dangerously contaminated. Six months later, they tried to get evidence after the fact. My lawyers and I think they did this because they knew what in Can they already knew that in Canada had broken the law. They didn't want me to find out. At this time, I did not yet know in Canada had fracked our aquifers. In the letter, they wrote, criminal threats will not be tolerated. But they never fingerprinted me. Are you, are you keeping track of the protests over there across the water? How many people are being in, uh, arrested? Mothers holding babies, 80-year-olds, uh, 90-year-olds, young people, middle-aged people. 
they're being thrown in jail. I was never arrested, never charged, never fingerprinted. And yet they judged me a criminal. Three Blood Tribe women in southern Alberta were arrested, thrown in jail, fingerprinted for criminal intimidation. They were standing with three women with three tiny little post, um, frack signs in front of three, or a, a crew of massive frack trucks. And Kimberly Mildenstein, a mother of three boys, terrified for the safety of her sons, because not only can we not get the companies to heed the laws in place to protect water, we cannot get the companies to follow the traffic laws. So she was trying to get the police to protect her children, to enforce the laws of the road. They refused. Time is money. So she got really angry one day and did write a threat to the regulator. She wrote, I'm going to shoot r bullets at the crew as if a terrorist would ever do that, put in, in writing that they're going to do it. And they came and arrested her, threw her in jail, and her husband knew nothing about this, and they went to his place of work. He was a bank manager, and they arrested him too, even though he knew nothing about it. I think they did that to shame anybody from doing anything or speaking out. It's not just my water. This is Dale Zimmerman, rancher. It's really hard to haul water when it's 30 below. You might think with Ophelia dumping all that water, oh well, so what's the big deal if our water supply gets contaminated? We can just go haul it. We don't have to worry about winter. Well, what if Ophelia brings winds that will bring you the winters that we have? It's awful for me or anyone to haul water like this. He has a, a young daughter. The government knew they had failed us. They promised us safe alternate water regardless of whether nature caused the contamination or not and permanently. They finally come to test our water. They ought to have been there two years early, earlier. They knew Encana had broken the law. They were sent a copy of that report showing Encana had fracked our aquifers. This is me. I didn't trust anybody at this point anymore, gathering samples. It's my property here. This is Leslie Miller. She was a trainee with the water regulator. They send in the trainees because if you're a trainee, you're not going to want to lose your job. And you won't question when the authorities tell you to do bad sampling. She would do the methane samples, leave the vial open. Methane exhales very quickly. So does ethane, letting most of the methane escape. My samples got three times the amount of methane that she got on the very same sampling day. And another in, uh, investigator was in my barn. This is my property here in the old Rosebud Rivers here. And he was checking the production level and the status of my well. And he, he said, right, he admitted right there, there was something seriously wrong with my well. He looked around at my empty property and said, oh, you don't have cattle, right? And I said, nope, I don't have cattle. I work out of town too much. I can't take care of them. And he said, well, you caused the contamination because you don't use enough water. They hadn't even finished their sampling yet. Best in the world. Three days later, we have an emergency meeting with the Minister of Environment, with two other landowners with contaminated water after fracking. And we are all blamed for the contamination because we use too much water. They actually said this. After I went public, I had never, prior to finding this out, I had never heard that most of the water wells in Alberta were contaminated with natural gas. Had never heard that. After I went pu public, suddenly the politicians and the regulators and oil and gas companies were saying most of the water wells in Alberta have always been contaminated with natural gas. You will hear that everywhere that water wells are being contaminated where they are fracking. Some of the politicians would go as far to, as to say all the water in Alberta is naturally contaminated. Can we turn um, the lights a little bit more down there right behind you there? I'll volunteer you as a... Here's my property here. This is about six miles. And uh, these black dots, if it was darker, we'd see red. But these solid dots here are the shallow wells that Encana has fractured into the freshwater zones. There's about 200 of them. The smaller black dots that you can't really tell, these ones here, those are the deeper conventional wells or the deeper unconventional wells. It's a massive cumulative impact. And this was just to April 2006. You get fracked, and your water is contaminated, and they keep fracking you. There are far more wells that have been fracked since in the freshwater zones. 
In April of 2006, the regulators knew that Encana was the guilty party. These are legals for the Encana gas wells. Two different labs. Dr. Carlos Mullenbox, who's the king of fingerprinting these gases, but they didn't tell any of us. And they told the press and told the public that it was bacteria and that we were to blame. Some of the chemicals in our water, some of these are man-made. The chemicals in my water, the chromium went up by a factor of 45 after Encana illegally fractured the aquifers that supply my well. And then the government legislates baseline testing. They are doing this everywhere also. Quebec, New York, Pennsylvania. After the water wells are contaminated, the government say, now we're going to collect baseline data. So this baseline data will then blame nature for everything, because they're saying, well, the water, the, wa the water has got methane in it, and that's baseline. Six years after all these experiments, and 200 wells fracked in the freshwater zones. This is the Bruce Jack water well, like my water well, but much worse. This is his water being forced out of his well because of the methane and ethane in it. He tried for two years to get help from the regulator. They told him to vent the gases through the roof of his pump house, which he did. And he did this prof professional venting that the, the water regulator instructed him to do. And finally, he got two industry gas and water testers to come. And they came to turn his well on. And the methane and ethane ignited, putting all three men into um, the hospital from a serious explosion caused by the contaminated water. This is life threatening. Canada-wide, how many of you think Canada is a, a nice, green, environmentally friendly country? I used to. Yeah. No testing for any of the chemicals injected by the oil and gas industry. And we have a lot of federal r rules requiring chemical disclosure, but the oil and gas industry is completely exempt. Not only that, but you know how people are asking for the frac chemicals to be disclosed before fracking? Don't do that. Ask for all the chemicals to be disclosed. The servicing, drilling, cementing, and other chemicals used, acidizing, etc. those chemicals can sometimes be much more toxic than the fracking chemicals. But people around the world are only asking for the frac chemicals. They're being misled. It's very important. The Research Council uh, head, head man, John McDougall had no science background. Again, you put a non-science person into a position of authority in the sciences, and he can do all kinds of dirty science, which he did. I found a briefing note that I didn't get till two years later in a Freedom of Information request, where that man, the head of the Research Council, wrote that the, they, in, in cahoots with the water regulator, were going to blame bacteria for the contamination and that we wouldn't like it best in the world science. They had not yet gas tested my water, not for the fingerprinting. And the companies are fracking the bacteriological <coughs> methane. They are fracking so shallow. They are fracking the zones where the bacteria are making the methane. The deeper methane that's made by, by heat and pressure, they're fracking that too. But most of what Encan has done around us has been very shallow. And a lot of researchers that are publishing peer-reviewed papers are ignoring this. Either they're ignoring it or they've been really bamboozled. But I cannot believe that my colleagues out there in the world are not smart enough to figure this out. But they are ignoring that the companies are forcing the bacteriological methane to release in, from shallow zones. This is Kevin Pilger, investigator with the water regulator, 20 years experience, my neighbor Debbie Signer. He's sampling her water well, no surgical gloves, he did not sterilize his equipment. Her well was new, so you can see the grass hasn't yet grown all the way around it. And we're talking to him, and I said to him, well, I have all this data, I have this evidence of Encana fracturing at 120 meters, 100 meters. Will you look at that data in your investigation? No. We will not. We couldn't believe it. Why will you not look at the data? Well, because Encana promised us they only fractured deeper than 600 meters below the surface. I have stacks, boxes of Encana's records from the energy regulator proving Encana fractured those 200 wells in shallow zones. But the regulator refuses to look at it. And so I told him, we'll go to the energy regulator and look at the energy regulator data. Don't look at what I collected. No, we can't do that, Jess, because you broke in 
to this, this heavily secure building, you broke in and altered all the data. <laughs> That's what he said. My neighbor who was a farmer. She was so shocked. She had to go sit inside in her kitchen. She thought she was going to faint. So one of the positives, there's a lot of negatives to being fracked, but this is a positive here. And now there's a movie made of it, so it's just great. When you get fracked, you turn into Wonder Woman or Superman. The chemicals make you really strong. So I just scaled up this building. I punched a hole in one of the walls where there was no security. I jumped in with two massive tanker trucks full of whiteouts. And I spent 10 lifetimes worth of time in one evening and changed all of Encana's data. You know how messy whiteout is. You notice if that data has been altered. I couldn't believe it. So I said, OK, Kevin, forget the regulator data. Will you read the report, the hydrogeological report that Encana had retained? Now, I found out by Freedom of Information a few years later that the water regular, the regulators had already received the report in Canada had retained, proving that they had broken the law. No, he says, we won't read that report just because you fabricated it. 